jockey of Serengeti Empress uh, from the far side of the stage towards me. Uh, we have winning trainer Tom Amos. We have winning owner Joel Politi. <laughs> and winning jockey Jose Ortiz. And this is the first Kentucky Oaks victory for all three of these gentlemen. Congratulations. <laughs> Tom, I would like to start with you. Uh, it's been an amazing few weeks uh, for this filly, and we will get to that backstory. But first, I'd just like to hear your reaction to her performance today. Well, I've never won a race this big in my entire life. Uh, and I've been trained since 1987. I've won a lot of races, but not one like this. And I've heard it said that when it happens, uh, it's just a different experience. Today for me, it was a rush of emotions. I thought about my mom and dad, who were 93 and 94. They're at home watching. I know they saw this today. I can't wait to call them and speak to them. Uh, my extended family, I've got five brothers and their families. My wife and kids are here. Colleen, my wife, Ashley, my oldest daughter, and Haley, my youngest daughter, are here. And I think as a team, us four, have seen quite a bit, as every trainer has, in terms of sacrifices and getting up early and moving around a lot. But I, don't separate me from anyone else. That's the life of a trainer. They put up with a lot, and I think today was just one of those days where <laughs> just, I, I, I thought about the people that taught me along the way too. I, I just had so many emotions and they were going through my head so fast. Uh, as you can tell from the way I'm talking, I'm usually not at a loss for words, but my head is spinning right now. Well, let me help you out. Um, I know you were not pleased with the post draw. You, you were further outside than you would have liked, but Jose ended up in a perfect position. How did you see the trip? So I liked what I saw after the first 100 yards. I, I saw a horse go down. Uh, I did not look at my horse anymore. I was looking at that horse. I saw she got up and she was okay, and the rider got up. And then I put my uh, focus back on my horse. And at that point, I could see that Jose was riding to try to make the lead, which we discussed. And uh, when he made the lead before going to the turn and was able to save ground around the first turn, uh, I felt comfortable with that. Down the backside, when they put up a very fast opening half mile, my wife turned to me and said, that's too quick. And I said, not, not, not for her, it's not. Because when my filly's good, she's really good. And uh, that's really what we should be talking about. She's a great athlete, uh, and I'm so blessed to have her. So uh, yeah, I guess the focus is on us three, but if we could put her in that fourth chair right there, I'd love to do it, because she would tell you, I'm the man. <laughs> Jose, I'd love to hear it in your words. That, um, you must have been a little bit surprised to get the lead as easily as you did and then be all alone. Just describe the trip for us. Well, I appreciate the, the confidence, first of all. Thank you, both of you, for giving me the opportunity to ride her. Uh, Tom gave me a lot of confidence on her. I've never been on her, and he told me, ride it like you own her. And <laughs> that's what I did. I went out of there. I know her best races are in the lead, and I just tried to get it comfortable. I don't care if I was going a little bit too fast. As long as she was comfortable, I was comfortable with it. So. And then can you tell us about, say, the last eighth of a mile when Leora was coming to you and what she gave you there? Uh, when we passed the waterfall, I went and started riding her. Um, she responded really well. When she put her hair down and took off, I said, man, she's kind of uh, big today. And uh, past the eighth, I hit a left hand that she gave me that second gear. And from that point on, I know her. that pay was never going to go by. Keep pinning her ears down. And she was going to keep going. There she goes right there. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm so excited to, to be in this, um, this position, but I gotta say, when I see Tyler working the Billy oh, the yeah. other day, the Jimmy, Jimmy's my name, say, why I'm not working the Billy if I'm gonna ride it? And I was a little worried. Say, no, don't worry about it. Hey, Tyler probably is gonna ride it if the other Billy draws in the race. Say, okay. No. I was a little nervous until I see the entry came out. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew she was very light. Because last time she had, she had some issues on the background walks. Yep. And I knew someone was going to have it ready. With that, Breeze 58, and she did everything right, just like he wanted. He was very happy with her, and I was very happy. You know, he got a lot of confidence, and he passed it to me. Like, I, lo I love to write for owners, that, uh, trainers that tell me that yep. just do your thing, you know, I, I love it. Well, Tom did indeed have her ready, despite leading in the Fairgrounds Oaks. Joel, um, can you just talk about 
since that race and everything that, that you've been through, uh, getting her ready after a, a disastrous performance in New Orleans? Well, um, the getting her ready is all, all Tom. So credit here goes to Tom. Uh, you've, I mean, you've heard say he won a lot of races. I think Tom's the greatest trainer in the world, and I'm ecstatic that he won this race. Um, so what we've been through emotionally in the last six weeks is a, a lot of things because um, to us, she's a really special horse. And so the first thing that we talked about repetitively was the day after the Oaks, Tom and I stood in the barn and said, we're not, gonna, we're not under any pressure to run in the Oaks. We, we were very both resolute in that we were not gonna run in the Oaks today <clears throat> under any, um, any press or, or, or push just to run in this race. And we took it day by day, and um, she's an incredible athlete, and she showed it every day in the morning. And, uh, and Tom and I have talked on the phone and texted to the point where we've got a direct line, right? A T1 direct communication. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and she told us that she was fine repetitively along the way. And if she wasn't, both of us were very committed to not running. And, um, and again, every day she showed us that she was fine. And that last work, uh, if you haven't watched the replay, it's on YouTube. It's an eye popper. You don't really need to watch the replay because you get to watch this one, but we had, she gave us a lot of confidence. Yeah. Tom, you were cautiously optimistic after that stiff work. Uh, can you just follow up about the last six weeks? And sure. Especially the work you put into her to confirm she was good. We got up here uh, after the Fairgrounds Oaks, and um, she had bled in the Fairgrounds Oaks and bled significantly. She bled outwardly. And uh, they gave her a precautionary ride back to the barn area uh, on the horse ambulance for the bleeding. And when I got up here, I thought to myself, I'm reading all these comments that she's hurt. And uh, she was never hurt, obviously. But I finally decided one day that I was going to bring her out to the racetrack. This is in early April when we just got here. And I was just going to take a film clip of her uh, to put on. Uh, social media because we were being very transparent with her and I'd also decided at that time that I did not think we were going to run in the uh, Kentucky Oaks and when we made that decision when we announced it I was concerned people would again think that she was hurt from the Fairgrounds Oaks so I told my exercise rider to back her up to the 7 8 pole which is literally 3 8 a mile and then gallop her by me so I can film her on my uh, phone at the half mile pole and just pull her up. So we're talking about sending her to the track and going five eighths of a mile in a gallop, which no one ever does. But I just did it because I wanted to get video of her so people could see that I wasn't hiding anything from anybody about her health. And I took the video and I sat up there and all of a sudden she came around again and he misunderstood my instructions and, and went an extra mile. When she came around the second mile, she, her ears were doing this. I mean, she was, it was fate, you know? She was, she was, look, horses talk. And she talked to me that morning and said, you know, I'm gonna be okay. And uh, I, I, if he hadn't made that mistake that day, if my ex-husband rider hadn't made that mistake that day, I, I was getting ready to call Joel and say, let's just leave the race alone. Uh, but when she came back around and looked as good as she did, I went back to the barn and I changed my mind and we took it day to day from there. Uh, we tried to be very transparent in everything we did. Uh, it's all on social media. The work Jose is talking about was a, a work with another horse. Again, she spoke to us that day when she worked. It was, I called it that morning after the work, a wow work. And most importantly, on that particular day, we treated her uh, therapeutically just as we were going to treat her for the Kentucky Oaks so it was important that not only she worked well but that she didn't have a bleeding episode so we scoped her afterwards and she was clean uh, for those of you who are at the barn uh, Dr. Dunlavy who scoped her spoke to you guys and, uh, and said she looks perfect and uh, I called Joel and I said we're gonna go we're gonna, we're gonna go in the race so uh, you know when I watched her today out of the gate it, it looked a lot like the Pocahontas last year. She made the lead out of the gate down the backside, just like in the Pocahontas last year as a two-year-old, right here on this track. She went very, very quick, but the ears tell the tale. And when the ears are doing this, you know you got something underneath you. And I watch it uh, on TV, and uh, I wasn't concerned about how fast she was going. I knew Jose had horse, and, uh, and that was sweet, very sweet.